Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You join us at the Woolly Mammoth parking lot for another hogback video. That just sounds really funny to say. It's been a while actually since we've done a hogback video. And in this uh, episode, Max and I are gonna take the Mercedes EQS, actually it's the Mercedes AMG EQS, uh, for a hog back loop. Now we've run Mercedes system in this test before in a GLS. Uh, now we have one of their electric cars. This is their flagship electric car. And um, basically we're gonna take it on the world's toughest driver assistance test. The reason it's the toughest is because it's the only on YouTube. So uh, let's do it. This is the 2023 Mercedes AMG EQS with the full driver assistance suite. Max, what do you think about this thing? Uh, honestly, you know, I'm not alone. I don't love the EQS looks. I don't think the white paint does this particular car any favors, but I do honestly like the wheels that are set up on here. And we've got the big AMG ceramic brakes. So there's some performance credibility here. This thing's fully spec'd, $158,000 as tested. <laughs> which actually puts it, it's a little bit more expensive, but about eight grand more than I think my Model S Plaid. So we're gonna do some head-to-heads uh, on that. We're also starting a new channel, big announcement. Yeah, Out of Spec Guide. So that's gonna be the first video uh, coming up in a few days. We're gonna compare this to your Plaid. Yep. Uh, so you've lived with this for a few days, you're gonna live with it for a few more days. Obviously, you've lived with your Plaid for a bit. Um, if we wanna give a quick preview to that, what are your thoughts so far on this? So they're so different in character. When you sit in this car, you have a very German solid feeling on the inside. It's so quiet going down the highway. It's so comfortable wafting around the bumps. And if you just excuse us one moment, we just have to have a car come through here. And then uh, looks like we should be cleared. He's just jamming out to music. Colorado. Uh, <laughs> you know, the Model S is, is, a, is a weapon in a straight line. And this is lacking the acceleration. What is the zero to 60 on this? The three something, three six, three five. So that's like Model 3 performance territory. Yeah, <laughs> it feels like Model 3 performance. But what this does do is it pulls all the way to 150 miles an hour. Great. The Plaid, uh, allegedly, the Plaid pulls really hard everywhere. So yeah, if you want acceleration, there's one choice. If you want a charging network, there's one choice. <laughs> Mercedes claims they're building their own charging network. They got so fed up with the charging problems, they said, we're creating our own with ChargePoint, but that's gonna take how many years? Uh, I think seven, but they're spending a <laughs> billion dollars. So they're yeah. backing a lot of money behind it. Well, they're obviously more frustrated than us if they're spending a billion dollars to solve the charging problem. Yeah. <laughs> we're not doing that. But German companies like to throw around money, so let's see it happen. Yeah, let's see it happen. Yeah. I totally agree, but either way, at least they recognize the problem. But honestly, uh, as an all around vehicle, if you just have one, you gotta go Model S because you, then you can charge it. You can take it places. With this, you can certainly try, but it's gonna be a little frustrating. But as a daily driver, a commuter, this car is great. I wouldn't get the AMG version. I would actually get the 450 plus, the base one. Yeah, Super comfy. This one is not particularly efficient. No, and, and we have to run it in our range test, but I was really disappointed with the efficiency, actually, 630 watt hour per mile coming down to Denver. Uh, it was 1.6 miles per kilowatt hour. It was less efficient than our Rivian that was following this. That's absurd. That's insane. For what's supposed to be one of the most aerodynamic shapes on the market. I don't know, and like, I was driving quickly, but Alyssa <laughs> was right behind me too, so I don't know what was going on. So Mercedes should just buy Lucid, put in a wonder box in this. <laughs> Maybe that'd solve all their problems. Yeah, if, honestly, uh, some Lucid tech in this thing wouldn't hurt. But, you know, from, from a Mercedes standpoint, they are now the only automaker approved with level three self-assisted driving uh, in Europe and the US, I believe. They just got their US approval. So that means they have more autonomy than any other automaker. That's awesome. And in the US, we don't really have as many rules, so you can kind of do whatever, right? With I mean, we kind of do that anyway, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what we want to find out is we've run Teslas in this test. We're going to run the Model S in this test soon as well to really do a good head-to-head -head because I really think you know, th this and Model S, we get a lot of emails. I didn't think people were gonna cross shop them. A lot of people are cross shopping. So we're gonna jump inside. We're gonna take it on the hog back loop. Uh, essentially our hog back loop is a 15 mile stretch in each direction. So a 30 mile stretch, 
1,500 feet of elevation change along the stretch. Uh, one of the hardest, twistiest sections of I-70 in the country. Uh, and then we're just west of Denver. This is the climb into the mountains. And, um, you know, really the, the whole idea here is it's not a scientific test. The conditions change every time we do it. It's really to get our impressions of the car and how it works. But there is an objective scoring portion as well. And we'll be taking notes and demoting things when we find it doesn't do well. And since this is Max's first hogback and our first hogback in a while, we'll refresh everyone as to how it works. I even need a little bit of a refresh. At the end of the video, we'll tally everything up and then let you know how it does compared to its competitors. Right now in the leaderboard, uh, I believe Super Cruise is taking the lead, BMW second, Tesla third. Uh, and that's just in this test. Subjectively, I still think Tesla is king. When we tested the Tesla, was that a beta 10 or was that which, do you know what software version that was? It wasn't, it wasn't FSD beta because it doesn't work on the highway yet. Oh. But this single stack thing with Tesla should be coming pretty soon. Gotcha. So we have a lot of testing to do uh, this year with driver assistance. I want to get an open pilot car out here. Um, so I know we have some viewers who are going to help us arrange that uh, with a volunteer car. So, so much to do, but let's run the EQS. Let's get the score and um, see how it does. Let's Join us now inside the EQS. What a comfortable experience it is and quiet. Um, as usual, we're going to run through our uh, checklist here. We're going to award some starting points and then we're going to take some points away as we drive. I'm just looking at the scoreboard here based off of... Um, just uh, raw totals of scoring. The last Mercedes we tested was a 2022 same model year GLS, which is the big seven seat SUV, of course. That got a negative 22. And we really thought zero would be a perfect score. That means no interventions really. Um, but then of course we award some points up ahead. I really think uh, our viewers understand this as well. We really don't harp on the scoring system as being truth but I don't remember the GLS actually performing that bad. It's, it's actually the, the second worst. So maybe we shouldn't have that high expectations for this. And we'll talk about how the test works for different kinds of systems and some cars perform better or worse. But let's start with this. So first of all, Max, I'm gonna hand this to you. I'm gonna have you ask a whole bunch of questions and you're basically gonna check and uncheck based off the answers. So just run down the list for me. All right, so in terms of the driver interface, we're starting there with a capacitive wheel. That's a yes, very capacitive. Yep. Buttons everywhere there, so we're gonna yep. check that. And even you know, from the outside of the rim, rather than having to put torque into the steering wheel to take over, it'll just recognize your hands are on, That's, which I think is safer yeah. than having to sort of put some pressure in and then break away from a system which is Tesla style. Yes, so always love that instead of the, what is it, torque sensors or whatever yep. else they put in the steering wheels. Yep. Uh, safety eye tracking, this has Mercedes brands that I believe attention assist, so yes for that. Yes, so it's a safety eye tracking, but not for function doesn't unlock any added capability. So you still need hands on the capacitive part of the wheel. Yep. Even if you're looking ahead, it will ask you to touch the wheel, but it has, um, you know, it'll recognize if you like nod off yeah. as well. So driver safety check, but not for hands-free. No hands-free operation. Yep. Uh, limited to pre-mapped highways, not the case because this isn't that advanced. It's And that one's only for hands-free eye tracking. So since it doesn't have it, we can skip over that one. But Great. yes, there is no pre-mapping here, yep. Yep, uh, I believe it does have that Tesla, well, everyone has it now, but the display that shows the other cars around you. Yep, it so does. we check for that, two points. Uh, and then lane centering, pre map that doesn't apply here. Right, lane centering only on pre map that would be like Super Cruise. Right. And we really take a big hit on that because it's so annoying. Yeah. To our knowledge, the Germans aren't patrolling our highways, mapping it for the next generation level three system. Maybe they are. No, level three, I think, is HD mapped. So, okay, just but is buy it, the data. So they're not doing it themselves. No okay. one, yeah, no one does. There's like third party companies I that thought, map it. I thought GM did it themselves. No way. I didn't know that. I think they they were in their own cars. I don't know. Anyway. Oh, okay, we'll, that's I'll, cool. I'll fact check it later in the video. Yeah, let, let's but, yeah. see. That's awesome. Uh, automatic functions. So does it adapt to speed limits? It I does. believe it does show those on. And some show, but they don't adapt the speed to it. This does adapt the speed, so that's why we award five points. Okay, great. Do you know if this is a camera-based system, GPS? How does it 
Uh, not sure. Because I know like the Volvos will scan ahead. I'm sure Mercedes yeah. has the sensors for that too. Yeah. Uh, doesn't speed limit offset? I actually don't know if it does speed limit offset because you know not everyone just wants to drive at the speed limit all the time. Mm -hmm. And so if I go over here to driving and we go to assistance, traffic sign assist, speed limit warning, it allows you to threshold for speed warning, but I don't know if it allows you to go plus five on this speed. Um, so adopt a speed limit, it doesn't seem to let you. So I'm gonna say no, which means we subtract mm. two so points. So it negates the points. It actually says minus five on this chart. Oh, so yeah. that negates the adapt to speed limits point. And that makes sense yeah. because it, then who wants, no one drives the speed limit. Yeah. So it's not useful. Yeah. Uh, adaptive system aggressiveness. So how do we rate this? Right, so it depends on different drive modes in the car. Uh, will it drive differently? And the answer is yes. When you have this in Sport Plus, it closes the gaps quicker okay. than it does in normal mode. So a little bit more like a BMW or I guess an AMG driver. Right, yep, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, separate from the driving mode, it's it actually not. connected, so. But there is an individual driving profile. So I guess technically, we're gonna say no, but because you have to have the drive yeah. line in full. It's sport. only one point, and I feel like it, it's intuitive that it's it matches. It's all in the same thing. Yep. Because uh, you give people too many options, they are gonna forget about. Them. Yes, sir. Automatic lane changing. It does. Yeah. Uh, and then without user input, no. No. Because that would probably maybe once they do the HD mapping level three. So that we would uncheck that. Oh right. Yep. Uh, yeah, we're not awarding points for that. Doesn't return the right lane doesn't apply. Cause, right, because that's not uh, yeah. without user input, yep. So now the warnings that provide, so do we know if it'll do the seatbelt yank? Well, yeah, so what we should do is we should play the video. What we try to do is we try and factor a safety element into these tests, and uh, the hogback is all about, you know, everyday usability, but also making sure, like, let's not have systems that pull a Hyundai, and what Hyundai does, I don't know if you've ever seen one of those, they literally, and Kia does the same, they'll shut off steering but keep cruise control on if you're not paying attention. So you'll just go full send into whatever. Not a great design. No. Yeah. And so Mercedes, you would think, would do better. So we actually just tested it. So let's play the clip as to what happens when you're basically simulating a driver who's, uh, you know, unresponsive. And there's that clip of the driver who's unresponsive. I think Mercedes did a good job, Max, but it really took a long time. Yeah. for it to kick in. And not that many uh, stimuli or re responses to let us know. So I don't think there was any seatbelt yank. Nope. Our seats didn't vibrate. The massage function did not change. Right, they could <laughs> do so many, you know, they, they tuned the launch control to be a full experience with mm -hmm. the seatbelts and noises. Mm -hmm. But like, if you're, you know, passed out at the wheel, they're just like, uh, nothing. Yeah, so the only points here, I think we can award hazard lights. Those did come on, yes. as they should. Um, Bring complete complete stop. stop. It happened, yep. yep. Uh, and then, Steering does not let go without warning. Right. Thank goodness, not like the Hyundai Kia systems. Right. Uh, and does not pull over the shoulder, unfortunate. And no system does today, but we sort of future-proofed it with that idea. Yeah. Uh, that's us thinking ahead. So um, about with the points that we're starting off with, we'll tally this up and then we'll get to the driving portion. We're gonna lock in the car at 30 miles an hour, which is what we always do. So let's let it get down to 30. And then I'm gonna come completely off the controls we're pretty much there and we'll see what happens uh, and how it asks me to take over. So I see a guy on the bicyclist up ahead. No one is behind us. No warnings as of yet. So we're just going to keep cruising along here. <laughs> we'll probably confuse the bicyclist as we come to a stop in front of him would be my guess. Mercedes claims that after a series of warnings when the driver is unresponsive, it will ask us to take over. I wish I could move a little bit for this guy. Sorry. But we're real testing here today. It's a good thing we're not in like a Chevy Suburban with Super Cruise or something. Because right. I feel like that would be a lot very intimidating for yeah. him. Like yeah. the big SUV brakes so stop. Right. <laughs> and uh, wow, it's still going, Max, with no, not even a warning. Oh, oh now it's First the red. warning. Yeah. And I see it in the head-up display as well. No sounds yet. No sounds. There's the second warning. No sound. Oh, first sound. Second ding. Third ding. There is someone behind us. Fourth ding. Fifth ding. Six. Huh, does this let you drive forever? Seventh. Nothing's this is changing. <laughs> really lenient. 
a beginning emergency stop. There is someone, hazards on, and we know it will come to a complete stop and hold you there. So uh, just because of that person behind us, we won't simulate the full stop, but um, we do know it'll do it because we watched a little Mercedes infomercial on it. That went very long, but at least it comes to a stop in lane. So good on Mercedes for that. The amount of time that you can drive without interacting, that's that's got to be, I think, a new record on this channel, actually. That's a very fair amount of warning to give you. Maybe you had too much. Yeah. You join us now, heading over to the start of the highway, and, you know, a couple points of the EQS and then a couple points about the test. The car is so quiet, but it feels really wide and quite big. And so the car itself is like, this is a girthy thing to drive around. Um, it's also quite hard to pinpoint the edges of where the car is because you get the, there's no hood view. So it's not like a Range Rover where you know my right wheel is right there. You just kind of don't know. And um, about the test, the test, this is the part that I think is the most important because this is our subjective feedback on the system. I've driven on Mercedes driver assistance for thousands of miles and a whole bunch of different cars. In EQS, I've done thousands of miles on the system now, so I'm pretty familiar with it, but we've never run an EQS actually in our hogback, so looking forward to it. The one caveat I do wanna make is we are on winter tires, um, which shouldn't impact the results too much because it's an OE winter tire. It's a Mercedes approved tire. They're the ones who put the tire on the car um, but it is worth noting I always try to have the regular tires so we're gonna accelerate up to speed on the on-ramp Max is gonna tally things as we go of course it's got all the acceleration we could ever want <laughs> so which is really great it's no plaid but it's close we're at just about 25% state of charge getting it ready for some charge testing here in a little bit and we try and get locked on the system by the time we hit this 65 mile an hour uh, zone. So I'm just going to set it to the speed limit. Steering is on, but it's not engaging yet. So locked on and I'm already taking over minus one. We already hit the line there. So now it's doing its thing. I'm going to auto lane change to the left. If it's going to let me, there's a Tiguan to our left. It triggered its own blind spot monitoring on itself. This is always the tough bit is getting into traffic here. There's a Tacoma coming with an Acura behind it doesn't want to auto lane change we're just going to have to manually take over no nope. well no just because i wanted to get it in this lane we don't uh right. we won't knock it for that but not we're in comfort so not particularly aggressive with the lane changing behavior yeah i'm not sure if lane changing behavior would change based off anything else you know we just looked up the the gls st statistics by the way um i had to take over 23 times on that hog back and so this is really in theory the same system. I love the display showing each lane. It even sees two cars ahead, which is really interesting. So it must be doing some sort of radar bouncing. I know it's possible to get EQS with a LiDAR system. And I don't believe this car is using active LiDAR at the moment. I believe it's just using radar and camera. And I assume their LiDAR would be in the uh, on the front, not Volvo style having a load or anything. Uh, that's, it's in the like black thing in the front of the car. Yes, they yep. integrated there. Yeah, but we're just cruising along at the speed limit here. We run the speed limit for the entire test as always, and we're just doing the climb. The, the thing with EQS is that it's just such a cruiser, this car. You can really munch the miles with it. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about the charging as we get through, but I'm not having to take over at all here, just very lightly. You can see my hand is on the wheel, um, you know, just letting it kind of scrub through the wheel. Really smooth radar response to these people slowing up ahead. Mercedes probably has the best distance control logic out of any car I've experienced so far. We also can adjust, you can see it actually just auto went to the speed limit of 55 miles an hour. And so it must have read a sign that we missed. Did you see it change at all? I uh, did not. It's it could have also, the road work. It could also be outdated GPS information. I see that in a lot of cars where, you know, they aren't keeping up with current signs. So maybe it just was responding to some kind of data that's not here in the real world. Sure. And this is where the test is going to get a little difficult because I actually think it was reading the sign for the 55 uh, mile per hour. Uh, but we're getting into a little bit of traffic and the left lane is closed, I believe. So we're gonna indicate an automatic lane change to the right, does that perfectly. And I'm hoping it's gonna slow down for these guys in front of us, which it is. A little bit late, but A little did. late there, yes. <laughs> 
Um, and you know, it's a never, you never get a perfect run on the hogback. That's the downside. And, uh, you know, we're going to do our best to keep this going, but we try and maintain speed because part of this test is understanding, does the car, you know, pop out of its lane when we go through corners. But I think this is just a very short, uh, construction zone area and it should open up. It is not moving over for this object in the road. So I'm doing that, but that's no points against it. That's why we have a driver and, uh, you know, not part of the test basically. So, so far we're doing well. We've only, what, two miles so far? Yeah, roughly. Yeah, and only one infraction for that uh, takeover. Uh, so it's doing well so far. Okay, but if we end up sitting in this traffic for a long time, we will have to wait for another day. That's always the hard part of the hog bags. Right, this we is, want the speed. We need the speed. <laughs> but even just sitting in traffic uh, like this, you know, this isn't really a hard thing for it to do at speed. Yeah. Wow so good at this. This is where ADAS systems in general, I think, come into their own, but the Mercedes one in particular, yeah, it's so smooth. It suits the character of this car. It's and doing I, well. I have the distance set to medium right now, and I like how you get the display of distance to the cars around you. It's really nice. It shows you in feet. Even my Sprinter with adaptive cruise control shows you how many feet it's trying to follow behind based off of your speed. It's really kind of cool, actually. Yeah, all across the Daimler group, they've got that nailed down. It makes sense. I think uh, the their E-Class and S-Class stuff in the early 2000s, maybe late 90s, was were among the first vehicles to have radar crews. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And so this is the first hog back of 2023, and so I hope we don't have to deal with this construction zone anytime, but I know a lot of our viewers ask how the car does in traffic, so we're gonna let this keep going because we're almost at the speed limit, and it ends right up here, so I think the test is good. We're gonna keep this thing rolling. Yeah, I was worried it was premature skiers, but it looks like that was just the construction zone. Thankfully. And always with the hogback, uh, it gets harder as we go. And, and speaking of harder, this is actually really difficult because you'll see there's almost two dotted lanes that we're in, and the car knows which one to stay in without even any hesitation. Yeah. It's not trying to say, oh, I need to squeeze somewhere or not. So let's see how it gets us back into this area over here. Perfectly done wish we could move over for this car, but sorry. And uh, the speed limit should go back to 65, and I believe it actually did that automatically, and I hit the speed increase prematurely. So nice work, Mercedes. The adaptive speed is wonderful. I just wish I could say always go five over or seven over or whatever a, a driver would be comfortable with. Yeah. Whatever we're following doesn't look safe. Yeah, that's not the most secure. <laughs> not exactly a, the Tulay roof box, is it? No, exactly. Yeah. We need to move over and get around this uh, Highlander. Maybe they'll pick up speed. I always try and ride in the right lane when we do hogbacks because that's when you know we get these exit lanes like this. Yeah. And I like to see if the car takes it, but it didn't even. Like your Rivian likes it. to take those, right? With yep. uh, driver plus. Yeah, so, the, yeah. Volvos notoriously mm -hmm. always move over. Yeah. This one's always a difficult one for most systems, but with cars coming on, we're going to have to move over here. So I've yeah, selected yeah. a left lane, and it's just, it really likes a lot of space before you can move over. We had a decent margin, yeah, between that Pacific one, but I just didn't want to take it. And it actually worked out pretty well. Where, uh, man, that was so smooth through there. What a great system. And uh, we're gonna stay in the right lane. It's very important that we're in the right lane for this corner since this is one of the hardest corners of the test because it's a left turn with an exit to the right. So you really get to figure out is the car following the left line or is it following the right line? Because uh, it's actually hard to know. We're pretty much right at the speed limit here. So traveling at the perfect speed, this car masks speed. You'd have no idea we're doing 60 miles an hour. So right quiet. Now. It's crazy. And no hesitation yet. Wow, really perfectly done. That is, you, Max, you would not believe how many cars just whoop. Yeah, it seemed to just be like a magnet to the left uh, yep. dotted indicate. Uh, really yeah, nice. Really good. And now I really don't want to follow this person for the entire test. Maybe once we get to level four and level five, the car will be smart enough to d determine, oh, there's a goofball in front of me. I need to change <laughs> lens on my own. Right, human driver thing. So Let's here's hope. an auto lane change to the left, executing perfectly. And uh, let's just hope we can go past them on the uphill because we can't go over the speed limit in the test unless there's like a real immediate need, but we're still, we're, we're going for the pass here. Wow, that thing is loaded. <laughs> I mean, we didn't see anything fall off, but. Nope. 
it's probably best that we don't stay behind them. Yeah, totally agree. And then I'm going to select the lane change to the right. Um, the car does not automatically change lanes like Tesla does, like Super Cruise does, and others. Once you indicate, though, it'll execute with safe blind spot yep. Uh, buffer. Yep, and you all you have to do is go to the point of resistance on the uh, turn mm -hmm. signal, and it'll move right over. Better than Blue Cruise. Maybe I was using it wrong, but it seemed like it was really not doing automatic lane changes. Oh, Blue Cruise doesn't do lane changes. That makes sense, because yep. I would basically have to take over. And, and then you'd have to recenter it, it. Yeah, the nice thing is the system would automatically re-engage when you're in the next lane. Yes. But it didn't do any automated lane changes. So I have to say, this car is doing way better than whatever we gave points, whatever the point system for the GLS indicated. Maybe it's just an easier day, or do you feel like... No, it was a beautiful sunny day for that car as well. Um, you know, it could just be a, a larger vehicle, but they're both S-level, S-class level vehicles. They're both huge. So even though it's theoretically the same system, maybe they really have put in some of the best stuff in the And look at this. This always flummoxes Teslas, this wide lane. Mm -hmm. And perfectly, does not care. Just awesome so far yeah mercedes is really getting their stuff now i made sure we're on the newest software update to the car as well but um do you know if this this mbux get otas now yep fully over the air update situation the germans are always a bit weird with ota and like drive modules and battery modules i always stuff. hear like yeah then advertising our car has over the air updates and then it's a question of does it actually yeah it's, and a lot of it's just infotainment system versus rest of the car but this should have every module available to be updated whether or not they've unlocked all of that i don't know yeah and they definitely don't push updates nearly as much as the american automakers do not as much as they should at least yeah so Tesla being the gold standard. I wonder if we'll have enough range to do this test. Of course, we're going to burn a lot of juice up and we'll recapture it on the way down. But um, this is really not an efficient car like we were talking about. Very, very different than the rear wheel drive. And so future uh, EVA 2 platform cars will have a front disconnect on the motor and okay. a heat pump. Because these are both permanent magnets, right? Yes. So, so no disconnect function on this car. Yeah. Let's see how it does here. They're braking, which is a weird place to brake. And oh, it's really tight. A little tight. bit close for comfort but, okay, to that Okay, take over there at the okay, end. Okay, two. That's a minus, minus one. Yeah. And, and honestly, the Explorer didn't help that very much because they should have just kept with their speed. I really hate people that drive next to each other, but we have to go a set speed on this test. And some drivers just don't seem to care, like this guy. It okay. looks like he and his passenger are asleep almost. Maybe they're depending on ADS. Oh, that, that makes me feel comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mercedes. It's on them if they crash into us. <laughs> yeah, that dude does look like he's sleeping. What the heck? <laughs> his, pat, his wife is definitely asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Her head's just going to the corner. <laughs> nice. And here we go again, another perfectly executed corner. We've also got an RDX sort of flipping in their lane, so this would be an interesting kind of... Uh... Right. And so the idea is if a driver assistance system can work here in the mountains, it's going to work perfectly in Kansas. But I actually, I'm almost is feeling the opposite because on the drive down here to start this test, I always play around with them on the drive and, and figure out how they do. This was like super edgy all over the place. Perfectly done right here nice um, and it was just like you know left right left right didn't know what to do all over the place I actually have a little clip that will insert here that shows it like going to the way right of the lane and then over to the way left of the lane and, and it, uh, the only thing I can think of would be the Sun position was directly to my left also I know we had some frost this morning you think any of the sensors maybe could have had some ice cover no because it's all the cameras here and I made sure they're clean and wiped them mm -hmm. uh, the whole bit as we do before yeah. the test did all that yeah. um, the only thing I can think of was you know the little grooves like the little sound grooves when you hit the road yeah uh, on the side I think those filled with water and, and reflected or whatever, into... and it was just blasting the camera and yeah. they couldn't see because that's what was happening to me it wasn't even the sunlight yeah that was so bad it was just the reflection from the yeah water. we can't say that for sure but that tells you one of the benefits of redundancy in these systems right cough cough tesla we only <laughs> need cameras right <laughs> well i'm not totally sure how I, I i just i don't know enough tesla does a lot of things so here we go just went to 55 miles an hour automatically wonderful Great work, Mercedes. I'm seeing a little bit of brake light action going on up ahead. I'm going to indicate an automatic lane change to the left because this right lane ends. And this is where the test gets really difficult. So the hog back is always easy to hard, and this 
uh, section here into the mountains is no joke. Yep. And uh, look at this, a whole truck full of bolts. <laughs> the Subaru is coming over. I'm covering the brake, but it should slow down for him. There we go. It just recognized, and I can see it picked that up in my head-up display. It highlighted in green. Uh, and I wish we could show head-up display for YouTube, but it just never comes out on camera, right? Yeah, it's super hard to record those. Yeah, now normally we're the ones holding up the state of Colorado, but actually this truck is in front of us. Um, and so there's really nothing we can do. We're kind of stuck here in this lane. Especially with wintertime, I-70 gets really crowded with ski traffic. And uh, summertime, it's a little bit less uh, less busy through here. Yeah, doing these tests on a weekday in wintertime is imperative. Yes, absolutely. And what is today? Just a random Thursday. Imagine this doing this on like a Friday night or Saturday. Be crazy. Well, it's a Wednesday today. Yeah, you could have, you know, whatever, the latest version of FSD, it would cry. <laughs> yeah. Most drivers would. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but that's that's the point of these systems yeah. is to cry so you don't have to as the driver. Yeah, we, we put them through the ringer. Yep. Nice spec Volvo right there. T8. Proper oh, ski rack too. Yes. To see it, yeah. yeah, that's great. The bolts are hanging on for dear life. This one in the back isn't giving me confidence that it's strapped down properly. Nice golf art. No opportunity for a lane change, but this system's performing flawlessly. Yeah, and I mean, these are always, right, I imagine, irregular kind of weird objects to follow, these uh, big uh, trailers. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we, we hope for no traffic on this loop. Mm -hmm. We always have weird stuff. Yeah. And um, actually, what's what's interesting is Super Cruise did really well on our test, but it wouldn't actually work on the hardest sections of the road. Mm -hmm. So like here, or somewhere around the next corner, it basically just disengaged. Mm -hmm. I'm really curious to see how this system does it. I'm gonna try and squeeze our way over, because we're going 10 under what we really need to be doing. So there's one more car coming, and then I think I'm gonna initiate a, uh, initiate a lane change here to the left. So let's do this. There's some sharp curves coming up. Don't count that as a takeover. No, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just had, to, had to get it set up. So now we're in the lane going the speed limit that we need to go. Those seem to all be bold EUVs. Lane change to the right in the middle of a turn with an exit ramp. Wow, perfect execution. That's like the hardest thing you could throw at this system. And it just did that way better than anything else. Even Tesla gets a little bit confused from time to time and, and is way sharper with its input. This is a notoriously hard corner for us. I'm still impressed too because this is all local, right? Like none of this is based off high definition maps or anything. Yeah. This is all just the car reading the environment and, and reacting. It completed that corner perfectly, which so many cars can't. So this breaks the question why did the GLS do so badly and this is doing so great? And theoretically, very similar, right? Yeah, OS so it'd be system. the same. It's branded yeah. as the same system. Yeah. And that's why we try and run a whole bunch of cars through this test. Look at this, doing the corner all by itself. Perfect. Now, I wish it tucked in a little bit more. To give the Volvo some more room to pass, but yep. it did fine. It did fine. I do think, you know, one of the nice things about Tesla is they work like a tech company, right? So there's this transparency of, like, you have the version numbers of the software. Yep. And with the Germans, it seems like sometimes it's a little bit more obtuse. It's hard to tell, like, are we on a newer version than the GLS was? Yeah, and I think a lot of it actually comes down to the customer base. I don't think people buying these things really care. No. Yeah. Cause I then, wish they did. <laughs> I do. That might be the difference, right? Our, I feel yeah. like our viewers, almost all of them probably are going to go for the Plaid because, right, we're, yep. the EV, we're EV nerds. We yeah. know that by the numbers it's better. But traditional, the Mercedes crowd, they probably don't care. Right. So will it take the exit or not? Sometimes it's nice when it takes the exit for us. But no, it doesn't. And that is the end of the half the loop. So what's uh, what's kind of the status so far there, Max, halfway through? So we just had two takeovers uh, that uh, we had to do. So we ding it for that. Yep. No no disengagements though. Um, so really impressive for the first half. Wow, that is crazy. Yeah. And the GLS had five disengagements with warning, I believe? Uh, yes, five. Yes, now at no point did it ever just shut off on you. That is the nice thing about this system. There's two types of systems, some that get locked into their setting and some that don't. Mm -hmm. I think to merge back onto the highway, you have to experience the full launch control. Sure. Which is really funny. It like grabs the seatbelt, which the driver assistance system doesn't even do. So we'll come to a stop here. No one's around us. This is not part of the test. This is just Yeah, we always AMG do the acceleration fun. here. Left foot hard on the brake. Oh, race start, not possible. We must be at too low state of charge. I'll just forward anyway. Still makes the noise. Especially 
actually at low state of charge. Yeah. We'll go back to comfort mode. We gotta go down to 55 miles an hour. We'll slow down. We're gonna lock ourselves in at 55. We always do it by the time we see the speed limit side on both sides, and we're on. Ah, minus one, hit the line. Now that I've got a set, it seems to like get a little confused when you first put it on. Or right, when so it's, it didn't disengage, but in that case, you have to just take over and get back in the lane. Yep, exactly. It just went to the wrong path and it touched the line. So this is a really tight section, of course, heading through here. So let's I'm, see how it does. I'm impressed that we just read that 50 mile an hour adjustment. The signs on this side, maybe because of the way the wind blows, are very dusty. Yeah. Uh, so the camera system's doing a pretty good job of scanning and reading the road signs. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, this is great. Perform that corner flawlessly. We've got an interesting trail. Big pothole here. Oh. Let's hope it doesn't hit it. Yeah, I don't know why they left that there. It does hug the outside of corners. Now, this was the corner of death, but they actually painted lines now. It used to be no lines here. Oh, so it would just go straight to the wall, most <laughs> systems. But uh -huh. now they repainted the line. So it's like we kind of have to disqualify the older tests. Course, yeah. But let's see how it does. Wow, cars on our left. I'm gonna let it go as far as I feel comfortable. And it's doing, wow, a fantastic job. And, yeah. and so comfortable over the bumps too. This in some cars really rocky because this is the climb lane mm -hmm. for trucks. So they're running chains through here and tearing up the road. And even on these big, I think we're on 22 inch wheels, 21s or 22s, uh, it's doing great. I wonder if part of that. And look at this, the sun's blocking all the lanes. And it did that perfectly. Raining really well. Sorry to cut you off there. No, I'm just saying I wonder if it's uh, part of the, uh, what was I going to say? Um, oh, lane change canceled. What's it going to do? Oh, no. It's just, uh, it's actively steering us back to the lane over here. Okay. I don't know why it canceled the lane change. And it's not slowing down for the truck in front. And I think the reason was is it was actually going to do an overtake pass. So I'm going to manually overtake this truck and get us back into another truck up here so let's not deduct any points for this yep. we're gonna, I'm gonna get it reset to where we need to lock it back in this happens occasionally we're gonna hit resume now we're locked back in the system of our class so what were you saying next? I honestly forget uh, maybe <laughs> it'll come up later uh, but anyhow I uh, another failed lane change actually oh, oh minus one oh max it just shut off without warning minus oh disengagement three. okay yeah. so both you had to take over and disengage. Right. Yeah. Yep. So that was bad. Okay. So we're at four. Uh, and minus one again. Oh man. Okay. What wow. Is... It must have something to do with the angle sun. of the sun here. Maybe this is the same. Because is this a similar like direction you were driving from? What, are, what? No, I was coming. We're heading west, but I was coming south before. And oh, we're really close to the truck, but we're not deducting any points. People really need to learn how to use the accelerator pedal here. What's going on? Just altitude killing that much performance out of the focus? I don't think he has an enforced induction of any kind. Yeah, yeah. I think what, was I, what I was saying is these bumps, you know, not only do they test suspension, but also I feel like do occasionally they might throw off lane centering systems because, you know, it obviously will impact the steering. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure it could get jostled out for sure. Mm -hmm. That's why I usually try to run right lane all the time for these tests so they go through the same. This is a really tough one because there's a lot of traffic on this uh, drive, uh, at least heading the other way. This way, I'd say, is pretty typical for what we see. Yep, it's opened up. But yeah, wow, so I, that was the first time we've seen a Mercedes, just this thing, the steering wheel go gray, which means it's not doing anything with no warning. The only thing I could think the reason would be why is during a lane change, mm -hmm. it must have got confused. Because mm -hmm. I don't think the system would ever just shut off without warning and under normal. Very interesting. Yeah. Amber lamps. That always means traffic. Classic I-70. Yeah. Isn't there an Instagram I-70 things? Yep. And it's always ambulances, uh, a lot of semis. Yeah. yeah. We're going to actually meet up with them next month. Oh, nice. Um, at a Nokian tire thing. Right. Because Nokian yeah. works with them as well. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say is I wonder if the suspension, obviously it's a Mercedes, comfortable suspension, but I feel like um, maybe winter tires too, softer compound, that might be contributing to some of this. Certainly. Model X with a wrap. Or it's just really dirty. Um, <laughs> All right, spec Model X. Yeah, I mean, I think winter tires aren't helping, but uh, this is doing way better than the other systems, so mm -hmm. maybe it is helping. I don't know. Yeah. 
car merging on. Let's just hope they see us. Oh, I'm going to accelerate Take over. out of his way. So. No, that's not not a, technically a takeover. I mean, they just that. didn't accelerate hard enough on the on-ramp. Yeah. I mean, part of it's like, but, um, you know, yeah. as a driver, you still have to account for weird things. Human stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. As far as the test goes, though, the car would have continued steering there just fine. Mm -hmm. And technically, that would have been his fault if he hit us. Yeah. But we just want to avoid accidents. Yeah. Even though, as my normal driver, I would have indicated left, moved over for him. Right, we just wanted to let see if the system would yeah. react. And Super Cruise actually does something that I've never seen any other system do, is if it notices you're in a little bit of a pickle, it'll actually go two miles an hour faster than your set speed. Oh, to kind of overtake. Yeah, yeah, which is, um, I'm surprised they're able to do that because no one else does that. Because mm -hmm. I good. wonder if they're liable for the speeding ticket. Oh, that's a good legal yeah. question. Probably not, but. I mean, who would, two miles an hour over, is anyone going to enforce that? I don't yeah, know. that's the thing. But if you're already <laughs> 10 over, Oh, because they let you do the offset. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, this does too. You can set this. Oh, we should talk about the limits. 210 kilometers per hour, both for distance and steering, which is 130 miles an hour. Pretty generous. I give that a plus two editor's input. Okay. Because I cannot tell you how frustrating it is. I just took a Tesla to Las Vegas and back, and we're just pegged to 85 the whole time. And anytime you try to accelerate it to pass someone, it goes beep, 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 shuts off the system, you end up in autopilot jail, and you got to pull over and cycle the charge port. In this, you can just do 130 miles an hour, and it keeps you right in the middle of the lane. German character. The way it should be. I mean, it's tuned for the kind of driving I like to do. I'm not saying I would sit at 130 all day long, but if I was in Germany, I would. And this car could do it confidently. Yeah. It's very comfortable at those speeds, this car. Yeah, one of the things is I feel like the Plaid really, obviously, it's an acceleration beast. You get the sensation of speed. Yeah. This car masks all that speed and oh, acceleration. Yes. So even though it has it, I'll bite not as much as the Plaid, you yeah. never notice it. I took Colton for a ride in this the other day, and like we looked down and we're like, that's a big number. And we're like, <laughs> but we have, it just feels like you're just cruising. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty insane. And it's doing this great Mustang Mach-E coming up from behind in a little bit. Will it go straight? You know, why did the GLS do so badly? I gotta go back and rewatch that video because the numbers, at least, this this is gonna win. It's doing really well, yeah. Unless like catastrophe happens in the next right. few miles, it's, yeah. And it's it's always usually at the beginning of the return that cars either do much better or much worse. Right. It is odd how how big of a difference we typically see when we change direction. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it may have to do with the lighting characteristics. There's not honestly. It's a real world test. There's not much we can do around it. Reserve level charge high voltage battery. All right, not too worried about it. It says we have 30 miles of range. Gosh, this car is not efficient. <laughs> no. Maki -E going for the past. Extended range, all wheel drive. Looks like they're driving it properly too, covered in dirt. Nice. Technically not an SUV according to the government though. Oh, that's crazy. It's a station wagon. <laughs> Neither is a Model Y. Yeah, well, unless you get seven seats. Right. So you just got to get a seven seater, and the hyper screen is blinding me right now. <laughs> <laughs> they should have like a. They need the McLaren's electrochromatic glass so they could like diffuse the hyper screen. Yes. At times when it's glare. <laughs> I uh, am not a hyper screen guy. Neither am I. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the standard screen, yeah. but you can only get it in the rear wheel drive EQS. So there will never be one in Colorado because all wheel drive, the 580 and up, mm -hmm. standard hyper screen for the U.S. market. Thank goodness. I mean, I think, but yeah, German engineers, if you want fun things to do, please add that diffusion feature. I think that'd be great. Because, like, I've heard many people complain about the glare that, yeah, you get from yes. this. The BMWs glare you with the crystal displays, and this glares you with the hyper screen. Yeah, and then it, I, I was just seeing, like, you've had this press car for, what, several days? I've yeah, noticed two tons days, of three days. Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a little bit of confusion there, but it's doing it. It just did a little jerk on the wheel. Yeah. That was the most aggressive thing we felt to do so far. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. It's almost like so good it's boring. Which is how for a Mercedes, and maybe not an AMG, but you know, it's how it kind of should be for a Mercedes. So we're in a work zone, but I didn't see a 55 limit. Maybe there was, but it's slowing down for the speed limit here, which is, um, I guess, technically the speed limit, what it should do. So we'll just keep it at 55. Another. 
Did it seem to veer at all? Yeah, it just seemed to do a little correction, but nothing major. Model Y going for the pass. So let's see what it does here, because now we have another 65 mile an hour speed limit. So I actually think we are still in the 65 zone. But let's just see if it recognizes this and picks up on it. So we do have to merge to the left lane. Look at that second. Yep, so it read the sign. It's accelerating up. This person is right next to us. Can you just keep accelerating at the same speed you were? I'm manually. Oh, it's I auto making a lane change. Not fast enough though. I'm pushing it over. But no points deducted. It does feel like we're hanging a bit to the right. Now it's back to 55. Maybe I'm just really bad at reading speed limit signs, which I am. <laughs> but I didn't see a 55 sign there. So I'm going to put it back to 65. Lane shift ahead. Let's see how it does. We're getting a good amount of reach out of looking at the energy flow view here. Oh, yeah. Very yeah. cool. All on the front, though. Like, the obviously, rear. Right? Yeah. Not getting much breaking. Yeah. Into. It will always prioritize front regen for... Uh, that's where you can get the most efficiency safe. Yeah, for stability as well. Okay. So it looks like we're coming into a pretty hard braking zone up here with stop traffic. So I'm going to go hazards on to let people behind us know. And I'm taking over for the braking. But it definitely did not look far enough ahead for that. And so full hazards. And we're just hopeful that the people behind us see that we are basically stopped on the highway. And they do, which is great. Yeah, so if we if we had let it do its own thing, that would have been a pretty abrupt stop. That would have, I, I say we take a point off for that. That okay. was not looking far enough ahead. It was just... Count that as a takeover or just put it in editor? Yeah, yeah, takeover, yeah. sure. So let's resume the system. See if it moves over enough for these. Looks like they're painting the lines. So it really should hold left. Yeah, like, it wouldn't know the lines are wet there. <laughs> and no system would. And now we're back to normal operation. But that was a good little uh, test. Definitely went too far without braking. Yeah. Especially because it was around a corner and the car in front of us wasn't braking early enough. Mm -hmm. But I could see. What did that look not. like on the, the cluster here? The, was it? Well, was I did not uh, look. We should. You were paying attention to yeah. driving. <laughs> we, we should uh, take a look uh, yeah. afterwards, though. Yeah, definitely. maybe best head-up display in the business. Just huge, can see everything. When so I drove nice. EQE, I really liked it, as yeah. well as the navigation prompts. We're obviously not using that today, but if you use the in-car navigation, super, it wasn't even the augmented reality, it was just the kind of, you know, indicators. Yeah. It's really nice. And will it take this exit? It thought about it, but no, no points deducted. Good correction. It was smooth too, that didn't seem tricky. Yeah, no, I think this might win. We're at what points right now, roughly? Uh, so you added two points for that. Uh, on the drive, we've deducted so far eight points. So we basically, but when you're counting... How could the GLS do so bad? That this is so good, I don't get Right, it. yeah, this is, because it was minus 22 for the GLS. Uh, this Something is, like that, yeah. This is sitting at just like 29. Yeah, there's no way we could make it go negative 20. <laughs> This is a tough corner because we're coming in with speed downhill with some camber away from us. A little bit of bias yeah, towards yeah, the left. Yeah, but didn't touch the line. It definitely, you can feel it getting a little confused there. Now it's deciding which line to hug. Yeah. Because I mean, it, it is admittedly a challenging situation. Yeah, that's why we chose it. Yeah. It's doing great. Man, that runaway truck ran. I hope no one has to use that. <laughs> yeah, you would just bounce off. I feel like uh, you'd have a full, however many tires sending these out blowout situation. Right, yes. Yeah. So, it's packed ice. And it is amazing how this car makes 65 miles an hour feel like 20. So quiet, too. Yeah. The only thing quieter than this really is the i7. Mm -hmm. And how would you say this compares to the Lucid? Lucid's pretty quiet, but nowhere like this. I, don't think. I mean, up front in the Lucid, maybe. The two Lucids that I've experienced on the highway, I don't think were like prime. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'd like to try a new production one. Yeah. I mean, the yeah, every startup, right, is still working these things out. Right, and we weren't able to run a Lucid in the Hogback because it didn't even have lane centering. Right. Up until very recently. Because that was in their 2.0 update. Right, yeah. so it's like.
like uh, you couldn't even consider that car for a road trip because yeah it might have the range but you gotta drive the thing the whole time I'm gonna stay behind this truck just because we're taking the next exit here to get back to the woolly mem in the parking lot we're gaining a little bit of range you can see a hundred amps just going into the battery pack there Pack voltage is low. We're down to 370s right now. And it's supposed to be 420, like not 420 full. Okay. Yeah, somewhere around there. It's like 390. So no wonder it was limiting us from that. Nice like evo. So will it auto take the exit? The answer is nope. Doing it perfectly. We always give it to the last possible second. And then that's the end of the test. Wow. So, amazing performance here especially when we look at the other systems branded the same way doing such a bad job so what we're going to do is head back to the parking lot we'll share our final thoughts and um, then we'll give you the, the final score and see how it stacks up but I think I think we have a new winner I think we do crazy well you join us now after the uh, hogback challenge we've just been discussing a little bit a new winner in the hogback crazy yeah, so the Sierra was the previous winner, right? Obviously, Super, Super Cruise, Cruise, really good system. Final score, 13 on that. Uh, the previous Mercedes we tested, prior Mercedes, the GLS, minus 22, really did not have a good day. Yeah. Today, the final tally score uh, for the AMG EQS is 17. We thought when we started this test that nothing would even get close to zero. And of course we had awarded some initial points. So the, just the number, uh, what, what is like the best Tesla that we have? Uh, looks like the uh, 22 Model 3 right. at 7. But it also did better in the driving portion. So we, if you just uh, you know ignore some of the eye tracking stuff, the capacitive wheel that sort of artificially bumps the score of this car, still the best driving that we've had with the least amount of takeovers is which car? Uh, the 22 Model 3 that had the fewest points deducted for driving. And that was minus four, but what's this minus three? Oh, sorry, minus three would be the, oh, the Rivian. Really, the Rivian? Yeah, which I'm impressed given that behavior, right, to take exits and stuff. Rivian's not that great. Um, I mean, how, at least it's gotten maybe It only worse. had four preliminaries, so it ended up with a balance of one. But... Yeah, it didn't get a very good total score. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so this is actually not as good as a Tesla in the driving portion, mm -hmm. which I totally agree with. But more feature packed, more content rich. This This system feels a bit soft in everything that it does. It's very like, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna move over here. Tesla's like, oh, go. And sometimes it goes, where it shouldn't go, but it's very determined. This is like, eh, let me just squish its way around here. And I don't know, I think uh, at the end of the day, this is one hell of a great system for cruising long distance. Alyssa, your impressions, you've experienced all of these systems. What do you think? I mean, yeah, I was really, really impressed the whole time and everything was just so smooth. I was just so relaxed back here. Yeah, no all jerkiness. I, yeah, all I needed was some heated seats back here and I probably would have been a would have been asleep. <laughs> would have lost the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? No rear heated seats, $157,000 car. No. Your Plaid has like, what, cooled and heated rear? No, or? just heated rear. Yours, but okay. even a base Model 3 has heated rear seats <laughs> these okay. days. So I don't know what's good. You know, th these are all the trade-offs. That's for another video. But props to Mercedes. You win the hog back at this point. Um, still not as good in the driving portion as Tesla is. I cannot wait to run the newest single stack Tesla here because I think that's just going to smoke everything. Yeah. Um, but you know, not me being a Tesla fanboy. I just, I really love uh, what that Model S can do. And, and I really hate what it can do as well. Cause sometimes it does the wrong thing at the worst time. This really feels like it wouldn't put you in such a bad situation, but it may not get you through everything you need to get through. So there you go. The new winner, the Mercedes AMG EQS officially is the best driver assistance system we've ever tested objectively. Subjectively, it's up there, but I'm not sure it's better than Super Cruise. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you in another one soon. Bye-bye.